here. I want to go ahead and show you how to sharpen Spyderco Tenacious using the WorkSharp Heel Sharpener. Uh, this is pretty much the factory edge, factory geometry. I did touch it up a little bit in my intro video to the Tenacious. I'll show you what we're working with. So it is biting a little bit better. A few stragglers, but you know what? It can get sharper. I want more bite, which that means I need a better apex. The apex is a little bit off because of that micro bevel. I'm not a huge fan of the micro bevels. So let's go ahead and get rid of the micro bevel, reprofile it back to um, about, uh, about here. This is 20, about to here. So let's get to it. So the WorkSharp Field Sharpener comes with these little diamond abrasives. This is the coarse side, and this is the side I'm going to start with. Diamonds eventually wear out, and I've been using this thing a ton. And you can see, mine's actually a little bit worn. It's a little bit smoother. It doesn't bite the steel as good as it did when it first came. But it still does a decent job. I'm not sure if you could see the scratches in there. But it's cutting this steel real good. HCR 13 MOV is not the most wear resistant steel, so it should sharpen up really good. The chemistry of the steel is very similar to uh, Oz 8, but in the past I've seemed to have preferred Oz 8 compared to this steel. So before I sharpen to a burr on this side right here, I want to go ahead and match the bevel on this side, otherwise it's going to be uneven if I pop the burr here and then try to pop a burr here. So I want to even up my bevels, and then I'll go for the burr. But yeah, this seems to be sharpening up really quick, especially compared to F30V and some of the other super steels out there, S90V, etc. Now as I get to the tip here, you have to raise the handle or angle your stone in to reach that belly. Otherwise you'll be rounding it off. We'll go ahead and see what we're working with here on this side. Cool. So we'll try to match that bevel up a little bit better. You do you can use water on there. You can see that cuts the steel pretty quick. That's all the metal filings, the swarf on here. You're not supposed to use any kind of oil on here though. Now you can go back and forth like this, but you have to be careful not to vary your angle too much. because you don't want to round over your newly created apex. You can always decrease the angle and that's not going to affect the edge, but if you go too steeply, then you're going to get angle variation in some areas. So it's critical that you don't go over. You can go under, but you are going to scratch the side of the blade and you don't want to do that. But luckily you'll feel it. I mean, when you're on that bevel, it's like being on a railroad track and you can feel it, the contact on the stone. Yeah, grinding on the steel is always very labor intensive and it's not very fun. Excellent, looks like we're getting that bevel where we want. I'm going to continue on this side. Yeah, what sucks about these videos is all you really see is my hands and you know, my hands are ugly as shit. They're, they're beat to hell from all the labor-intensive stuff I do. So, if you watch my channel to see a hand model, you're not going to see that here. Alright, that's looking better. That's what you want. Not sure if you could see there, but they're starting to get matched up pretty well. 
and actually I'm starting to get a burr. So again, I'm not sure if that'll show up in the light, but there's a lip of metal right there. That's what we're grinding to, okay? You gotta get that lip of metal flopped on both sides, and, and just what that does is it lets you know that you have come to a true point, okay? That you've, you've made that true point. Otherwise, you could just be a little bit just before with the naked eye, you won't be able to see. The only way you could tell is by having it, that metal flop over and then flop over, and then you gotta get rid of that guy. All right, so now we'll grind this side until we pop a nice even burr that we could feel on the opposite side. And this seems like a, a lot of work. I mean, it's totally worth it though. This is really what sets a really sharp knife apart from a knife that's kind of sharp is popping that burr on the coarsest grit and then getting rid of that burr and then keeping that nice crisp apex. That'll just pop the hairs, it'll slice paper real good, and it'll make a clean cut through whatever you're cutting through. Now you don't have to do this every time you want your knife sharpened, but you do have to do that if you want to touch your knife up at the proper geometry for how you like to cut stuff. So now we could see that I've got the burr a little bit right here. Could use a little bit more work back over here. And this is kind of my, I kind of have a problem getting the burrs to pop back over here. It's kind of a pain. So now I'll just work this area here. I'm on the right spot. Keep it nice and even. You want and you want to be careful when you're at this angle right here. You want to do just small. You don't want to do full length because that can cause some kind of rocking. here. Check the bevel on this side. Okay. off this side here. Make sure we make a nice positive burr over here, the full length. We are just kind of uh, seeing a little spot burrs when we sharpen this side. So now we're back. And there's a lot of relief when you're finally getting to the burr stage. And this is a total pain when you're on a really wear resistant steel. And we've got it. So now how do we get rid of the burr? We'll clean off the stone here. You can see all that metal that's been removed. Well, here's how we do it. Light pressure, same angle, edge leading. And I could, I almost, I felt it snag a little bit on the stone. With the light pressure, you can feel it. It kind of snags and then you rips through it, just basically rips that burr off. For whatever reason, the edge leading has seemed to give me the best results. There we go. And you basically just do this as many passes as it takes to basically get that burr off. Now, when you've made a big burr, it can be difficult to actually remove that guy. And so sometimes you actually need to pull it through a piece of soft wood to make sure you get all of it off. And 
And so when most people think of sharpening, this is what they think of. You're just kind of doing passes on each side. And yeah, you do do that, but you have to form those burrs first, and then you can do what most people think of as sharpening. And this is on the coarsest stone. Now I'm going to inspect the edge, I'll look closely, we'll see if there's any of those guys on there. We'll clean this off a little bit. We'll feel, We're getting some good bite. So this is on the coarsest stone and let's see how well it does. And we can move up in the grit, that'll kind of help get rid of some of the stragglers, little toothy pieces and jagged pieces of metal that are still clinging on. So let's see what we have so far. This is just off the coarsest. Very sharp. Very nice. Excellent. And so if I wanted that a little bit sharper, I can then, I don't have to do the whole burr thing on the finer grits, all I have to do is just a few passes, and this helps remove any little remaining piece of burr that's on there. Cleans up the teethy pattern that I can't see at the very edge. Again, light pressure, just the weight of the knife. Don't bear down on it. When it comes to restoring an edge, you can definitely put some more pressure on there to really kind of knock the little folds and things like that back in line. But we know that we have a, a good apex. And for whatever reason, that light pressure seems to only get the little pieces that are straggling and it doesn't deform the apex that you formed. Excellent, and now we move in the ceramic. So with this, it doesn't appear we're gonna be able to get the full length of the ceramic. What you could do is you could grab something akin to like a pen or whatnot and push this through. We'll try to see if I can get something in there to push it through. And so you could push that pin out, just like a pistol or an AR, and then you could pull this whole rod out, which is really cool. So now I have unrestricted access to the ceramic so I can get all the way back at the heel. Of course, be careful, watch your fingers. And the ceramic is really good. And because it's rounded, I don't have to worry about lifting the blade up to reach the belly. It just always seems to fall on the curvature of any knife. The work sharp also comes with the groove ceramic for removing more material. And then this is for fishing hooks. And this is all rusted out. I've been using this guy a ton. When it gets dirty, when it gets clogged with all the swarf, you can use oil to just go ahead and clean that out. And be mindful of your fingers. Excellent. So that's with the white ceramic. We'll see how well we cut now. Very good. And we got that bite I was telling you guys about. And so when you get that bite in the paper, that's how you know you'll pop the hairs versus just kind of scrape shaving them. WorkSharp also has this leather strop, which I've loaded with some uh, green chromium oxide compound. And you have to go away from. If you wanted to use the uh, built-in guides, you could set the knife here and here and draw from heel to tip. But I rarely use any of the guides. 
check for any burr. So light pressure, I'm not counting, I just keep going until I see improvement from cutting. Excellent, let's see. of hair left. Excellent. All right, we can see there hair shaving sharp. It's a great working edge on there. And so that's basically, in a nutshell, how I put a edge on a knife. Now, they could always be sharper. They can always uh, take more improvement. But that's really about the level that I like to keep them at. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.